I can't tell you what an honor it is to be with you briefly today. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I'm committed to come to see many of you in the new year as we navigate our extraordinary times. And I hope you and yours are doing as well as possible. It's not very in to say what I'm about to say in these uncertain and often difficult days of COVID, political division, and often confusing economic business climates. But in point of fact, we are living in the most amazing days of world history. In fact, there's no time in history I'd rather be alive than right now. The data is with me. We, the world, are killing each other less, feeding each other more, seeing a global rise out of poverty that our parents could never have dreamed of. And it's all happening unlike any time in history. At the same time, of course, data masks terrible pain. And there is significant structural problems that previously we've had a hard time to solve. But as I'm gonna come back to in a second, the beauty is that all of us, you and me, have tools at our fingertips to go at these problems and new opportunities also without precedents in history. Now, I'm often asked, what is the greatest tech innovation of our time? And certainly in my job, I can talk decently about AI and machine learning, genomics and more. But for me, the greatest tech innovation is not the technology itself, but it's the access to it. And it's about the greatest economic shift in our life. But this is now an old story. The new story is that the latest capabilities I mentioned before in data science and machine learning and healthcare and more are also at our fingertips. Never has it been easier to find solutions to reach customers more affordably. Never have we had better able to offer more people financial inclusion, education, health, service, support tools for businesses than we have right now. Never have we been better able to unleash talent everywhere as we know the talent is, well, everywhere. Never has it been more affordable to stand up an enterprise, build solutions for one's country or region on the terms of that country and the region. Now, this isn't some small sideshow of young people doing their own version of Silicon Valley or Beijing. We all know about them. This is not a story of that. This is a story of new Silicon Valleys and new Chinas being built everywhere. From a business perspective, it says that 3 billion new customers have appeared globally. From a society perspective, it's that any challenge can be solved by anyone, anywhere, with gumption and the ideas to do so. And this means that we're once good businesses are enormous businesses. My journey investing in rising markets began in the Middle East, and we all know about soup.com being bought by Amazon and Kareem by Uber. But I have to tell you, hundreds are coming. And from Latin America to Southeast Asia, these aren't just unicorns, but decacorns, tens of billions of dollars being created right now. Africa is now having its own unicorns, and many investors have come up to me globally and said, you know, I miss getting into Latin America early. I'm not going to miss Africa. Billions of investor dollars, once skeptical, have come rushing in because the growth is here, the talent is here, and COVID has accelerated it all. In two years, we've seen not only unprecedented access to technology, but fundamental, fundamental behavioral change. Hundreds of millions and billions are now buying and selling goods to larger customer bases than they ever dreamed. Hundreds of millions or billions have access to all of human knowledge and education really pretty much for free. Hundreds of millions or billions have access to healthcare and privacy of their own homes and are therefore more comfortable using it and seeking it. Hundreds of billions or billions who have never banked before are now doing so cheaply and can borrow in their businesses and grow. And by the way, success breeds success. I've got a lot of friends who are economists and I don't think they really fully understand the multiplier effects of this so well. Access to digital wallets means consumers can spend more safely. Access to data means anyone anywhere can be credit scored. New large enterprises can outsource needs and products and the gig economy takes off everywhere. And I think what is particularly underestimated is that when one great enterprise in an ecosystem succeeds, they spin off trained entrepreneurs who do otherwise. We used to in Silicon Valley call this the PayPal effect because PayPal, once it was sold, spun off literally hundreds of entrepreneurs building new businesses. And they included people like Reid Hoffman of LinkedIn and Max Levchin of a firm. And of course, Elon Musk of, as far as I can tell, everything overall. So it is an amazing thing. And it's a reason why so many investors are finally engaging. So why am I so impressed in Pakistan in the lens that I've just described? Well, my friend and great ecosystem builder, Atif Awan of Indus Valley Capital has long talked about the basics. Pakistan has 220 million people, which is larger than Kenya, Kenya, Canada, and Malaysia combined. The medium age, of course, is 22 and assumes digital as the parents did water or electricity. Everyone who's retiring now in Pakistan is going to be replaced by three digital natives. The middle class will be 122 million people within the next couple of years, which is the largest growth since China or India. 
Rapidly rising consumer spending, even with COVID, we expect $360 billion uh, in consumer spending in the next couple of years. These are multiple multi-billion dollar opportunities. Internet access is massive and rising and affordable, and talent is astounding. And this is where I come in because I cannot get over the young people that I've been meeting and backing overall. And again, many of them are trained, experienced, whether it's from Kareem or other enterprises within Pakistan or abroad. Every area that we have seen massive elsewhere, B2B, B2C, trucking, fintech, healthcare, even e-commerce is wide open in Pakistan. I have a particular interest in businesses and rising markets get the hands dirty part right. They deal with fragmented situations which are very large, things in logistics which are very hard and tough. And once they get that right, they layer in technology and data science to make the businesses enormous overall. So I've invested so far in the great B2B marketplace in Pakistan Bazaar and the great financial wellness company, Abi overall. And I cannot tell you how good these teams are and how great their traction is rising. But what has become really most clear to me of all is that I am barely scratching the surface. Right now, the best investors from around the globe are investing. These are funds like First Round, Kleiner, Y Combinator, Wavemaker, Village Global, and my own Next Billion Ventures. But massively successful entrepreneurs from LinkedIn to DoorDash to Stripe to Instagram and more are putting their money into Pakistan right now. There's a flywheel unstoppably in motion moving faster here than happened in Southeast Asia and Latin America. It all looks astounding familiar to those of us who have been in rising markets for years. All, and I mean all, the dynamics are here. Now we surprise that as another leading ecosystem builder, eye to eye documents, so far over a quarter of a billion dollars have been deployed this year alone, four times all, four times as much of all 2020. What are we looking for in opportunities? Look at this year alone and the answer is already there. It is fintech, digital trucking and logistics and health, but actually it's pretty much everything. So what happens next? Where do we go from here? I think there is a great unleashing possible right now if we take it seriously. Great entrepreneurial ecosystems everywhere are by their nature and scale bottom up. Barriers to this unleashing exist and proactive efforts to seek out those barriers and consciously work through them is enormous. Because in the end, the top-down matters. It has been very interesting to see governments in rising markets choose to engage with startups, investors, and global experience to really learn and listen and create sandboxes of innovation and regulation, especially in places like FinTech, whose goal is not to treat innovation like a new version of something that you regulated in the past, but on its own terms. I'm early to all this in Pakistan, but I've heard very exciting trends whether going after gray market activity in consumer electronics, which has built confidence in buyers and innovators alike, and significant rethinking about FinTech capabilities and regulations that could unleash them. There are models for getting this right, though the right answers are always about local understanding. And this is the great opportunity, I think, across your amazing country. The upshot's gonna be that Pakistan's great talent will not only be unleashed, but one day could very well be another great hub of global talent and innovation from everywhere else as well. For me, this is not guesswork. We have seen it done. It's all there for Pakistan, and I can't wish you well enough. Thanks very much for having me today.